Stop right there. Yeah, you. If you like all things entertainment, current events, or Hollywood, then look no further. Creator to Creators, hosted by director Mio Shabin of Horror Noir, interviews filmmakers and creatives from around the world. Join in on the fun, guest celebrities, and informative information to have as a creator. Hit subscribe and stay connected to Creator to Creators. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Creators to Creators Today. Today, we have special guests. <laughs> uh, I'm Floyd Tulo. I'm the writer of um, Knock Knock. I'm Joe Staten. I am an actor. I'm producing this play, Knock Knock, and I'm also acting in this play, Knock Knock. Hello, my name is Chloe, and I'm directing the production of Knock Knock. Hello, my name is Claudia, and I'm playing the role of woman in Knock Knock. I love it. Thank you all for being on the show. I'm super excited to talk to everyone. Um, So I love, so I like to talk to people that are just, you know, creatives from every part of walk of life, all, you know, sectors of entertainment. Um, I love what you guys are doing. And uh, for those that are listening that, you know, don't really know about uh, this play and what you guys have going, tell me a little bit about individually just something small a little bit about your childhood that kind of brought you here to all like all together now so whoever want to kick that off go right ahead um well i can probably possibly start off by just sort of um giving the reason for knock knock's existence um i am i was brought up in south africa i've traveled i've done a lot of traveling so i was brought up in south africa and before we moved to australia an incident um happened an event that i was 10 that really uh, it 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 traumatized me at the time, um, and I always swore that I would remember what I'd seen and do something with it. And so, without going into all the details, that was the sort of the the kernel that became uh, knock knock. So yeah, so that's my little uh, nugget. <laughs> I love that. I know exactly what event you're talking about, Floyd, and uh, yeah. It's a, at least a good play came out of it, at least. Um, in terms of my childhood, I have moved around all my life. Um, I was born in England, grew up in France and Spain, um, moved back to England at the age of 19 to do drama school, then moved to New York to do t- drama school. So I've been all over the place. And during the pandemic, um, I had to go back to England and um, I met Floyd in a supermarket. It turned out he was my next door neighbor. Um, <laughs> in a supermarket market called Tesco, um, <laughs> and um, he mentioned he was a playwright, and I was like, "Oh, I'm an actor." And then um, he showed me the script, and he actually asked me to direct it um, in London, and I directed it, and then just sort of loved it a lot, and thought I actually want to try being in it this time. So we did it last year, which brought me to Chloe. Um, because uh, Chloe is a fellow Brit who I met over here in New York who said she really wants to be a director. So I was like, okay. Um, I actually put a call out for directors the first time we did it, and Chloe was really the only one who actually bothered to research the play and to like <laughs> give like her idea of what it would be. So I was like, okay, that's that probably means she's the one for it. Um, and yeah, we did the play last year, and now we're doing it again. Um, and we wanted to shake things up a bit, which brought us to Claudia, who is um, now our a new actor in it so yeah yeah so hey i'm so excited to be in this i'm i'm new to this team and to this play i just got cast last week awesome um, but i was like i heard that, that that chloe and joe were putting this on and i was like oh that sounds cool whatever and then i was like okay i'm gonna do the audition thing whatever and then joe sent me the script and i was like oh this seems really cool so yeah props props to the because I only read an excerpt and I was like yep I want to I want to be in this so yeah that's really cool you really you really I feel like it's really engaging the little part even if it's just a little part that I read from it because um yeah I mean I'm from Mexico I am Mexican nice I moved to the states I lived in the states a little bit when I was a kid and then I came back to go to drama school and the thing I really like is when I find these like projects that make you really want to that are, I mean, as actors, we're always trying to understand other people to be able to play them, right? But in this play, you're also trying to get to the bottom of something and just all the different like ways that you explore what's happening to one person and like 
trying to, I don't know, trying to, to, to understand and get to that. I think that's what, that's what brought me here, I guess. And to be an actor, the same thing that I loved about the play. That's amazing. That's amazing. Female director. Woo. Yes. Hello. Love um, that. Love that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, so as, as Joe mentioned, um, I came to the States. So I'm from England as well. And uh, I came to the States after completing my undergraduate in London um, to continue kind of like my postgrad um, at drama school here. And I love acting and I'm still pursuing it. I'm graduating uh, this summer. Right. And uh, it's just, there's always been this like weird niggle in my head. Maybe I'm just a little bit bossy and I just kind of love it, but it's, <laughs> but it's definitely, I just had this, this lovely feeling of, of uh, a need to be on the other side of, um, of the stage and just be in that, that kind of collaboration. Um, portion of theater and I have loved it like Joe I have I give my heart and soul to Joel to Joe because he gave me the opportunity to explore that I mean I had no I'd never done it ever before um wow. and wow. he put obviously Brits in in New York we kind of we hear each other and we're like yeah come be my friend um <laughs> and but I, I so I knew him uh from in and around the circuit and uh, I saw that he put out the advert and I thought and I was very honest I said I have never done this before but here are kind of my ideas I went away and, and the best thing you can do I mean I love the script straight away um, I'm a huge like reader so I, I feel like I really engage with good like honest stories really well um, I kind of pick up on them really really nicely and yeah I just kind of dived into the world um, that, that Floyd had created and I loved it and I just went deep research into into the world that he'd created and brought it to Joe and he loved it and I thought the end and I was like if I, if I can be an assistant director if I can just be part of anything I'd love it and then he can't he just he threw it at me and I was like let's do it and last year I loved it we did it at the um the New York Theatre Festival and uh it went really well we had really amazing feedback and yeah, when we get the, got the opportunity to do it again, I was just like, absolutely. And then why not? I feel like it's amazing when you get to do the same piece again. Um, it's really nice to just mix it up a little bit. And I think definitely with with the woman, she could be played. She could be played by anyone. We were considering any gender, any race, any age nice. as well. Nice. It, it's really it's really not um, specific at all. Um so then it gives us a lot of creative um, outlet to kind of feel like what a different person could bring out a different part of the story. So I'm really excited we brought Claudia on board. I'm so excited. Um, mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited <laughs> to get back into it. So. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add to that real quick. Is, is it okay if I add mm. something to what she's just said? So yeah, go one, for it, please. One thing that I'm really excited about is because when we did this last year, we were working in a space that had a lot of rules. You know, there were lots mm. of things we couldn't do. And now we're working in a space that have not got those rules. And I know for a fact that Chloe has a very weird brain. <laughs> so there's going to be some weirdness in this next one that uh, was not there before. Just and I love it. That's why I love working with Chloe. Let's put that on there. Pushing those boundaries. I mean, why yeah. not? Right. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. I, you know, and I, and I just, I, it just brings me joy to see people putting women and and not to say guys, I I love men. I just I just love seeing women in those positions. It just it just warms my heart because like the industry is you know we're 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 getting there slowly but surely. So congrats to you know everything that you guys you know have going on. Tell me a little bit about the process. Like what inspired you to do this? Like what was like what made you say yes? Like let's make it happen. Um, I mean, from my from my point of view, um, what inspired me to say yes? Well, this this goes all the way back to when I first directed the show because um, Floyd showed me his script, and to be honest, like with new writing, I'm always I I, I value new writing. I think new writing is very very important. Um, having said that, and I, I don't mean to sound 
harsh or cynical, but it's very rare that I read a piece of new writing script that actually excites me so much. Mm. You know, some of the older stuff is much more reliable because you just know it's really good. Whereas I think when you have new writing, you always take a little bit of a risk. So when Floyd said, I've got a show, will you direct it? The first thing I said was, well, let, let, let me read it first before uh, before I um, come on board. Um, because, uh, you know, I, I don't I don't know. Um, and then I read it and um, it blew my mind. It was such a really good piece. And, you know, it comes from a very honest place. Like like Floyd says, it, it, it was incited by something that happened in his childhood, which um, an interpretation of that appears in the play. So it comes from a very, very real place. Um, so directing it all those years ago was, was a lot of fun and very, very interesting. Um, but I'm not primarily a director. I'm primarily an actor. I like directing, but I primarily come from an acting background so I really wanted to sort of see what I could do with the role um which is why I, I decided to do it again and this time I'd produce it and cast myself um, in it so from from that sort of um angle that's that's sort of what incited me to do it and I wanted to do it one more time again because last year we had a lot of restrictions and this year we don't so the possibilities are endless so that's that's my point of view my two cents that's it I love that. Uh, Floyd, so this was something from your childhood. How, you know, being, you know, when you're when you're making something, creating something and being vulnerable, right? Putting your, you know, your heart and soul into something. Were 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 like were, were you kind of like nervous to put it out there or to share it once you were like done with it? We were like, I don't know. Um, well, first of all, by the way, I meant to say hello, Miosha. Thank you very much. I didn't even say hello. <laughs> hello. hello. It's really nice to be here. Yeah, um, same. <laughs> Uh, the the honest answer is um, uh, my wife teases me over this, but <clears throat> whenever I tend to write something, it's more that I have to get something out of me. This sounds mm -hmm. incredibly pretentious, but it it genuinely isn't. It's um it's something that you sort of in the end it's like vomiting. You you've just got to you've got to get out. For me, that this is such a personal particular play. It's such a personal story. So the motivations were the incident. That I vowed I'd do something to honor that and remember it. But in addition to that, I think one of the things in anything I write is about time. I've got I've got this fixation that um we all think of time as A, B, C, D to Z. And actually it isn't. Um mm. I, I being frank about it, I had a breakdown in the late 90s. And one of the things that I experienced that really did stick with me was that you when you have when you're in that sort of space in your mind the line breaks so what happened yesterday is just as real as today and what you're going to do tomorrow becomes something that's it, it all gets very very confused and that was the sort of inspiration and the drive when I had that plus wanting to do something I thought well if if I if I write something if I write a story that communicates all these issues so mental health animal welfare um uh time how we view it what it basically means to be human um and I've when I was a little bit unwell, one of the things that I realised was how, and I include myself, you, you tend to you, you view people who are going through something like that in a very particular way. They're not they're not us. They're over there, and actually they're not. We we are all inclined to it. We all suffer various um, emotional issues. So I'm I'm drifting now. But what I'm trying to say is, um, it it wasn't one thing that drove the the theme, but from my point of view the the joy to have all these people doing what i've written is extraordinary because what is written i might it might mean something very personal to me but it's in a draw and unless it's given life by people who speak the lines and actually don't just speak them but actually live them and understand them and bring stuff to them that i never thought was there that's yeah. an extraordinary thing and joe who um I can just say that I'm very, very grateful for everything that he's done. And uh, obviously all the others. Chloe did a great job last year and I'm sure Chloe was going to do fantastically this year. So I'm very, very, yeah, I'm very honoured and very pleased. I, I love that. I answered your question, but, but thank you. <laughs> no, this was, that was perfect. Yeah, I, I think it's so beautiful to, I think, you know, obviously I've I've never done a play. I've only done fe like features and, you know, film world, but I, there's just something to it you know, when you, when you put it and, and you perform it live in front of the audience and just getting that energy and feedback, what was the first, and I'm just curious and, you know, individually, you can tell me how you felt about it, but like when you, when you did do it, 
uh, on stage. What was the like the feeling? Because I'm sure that feel that must feels amazing, right? Once it's over and just to hear like what what someone felt from your the piece that you delivered, I, I bet that's like incredible, like a rock star feeling. Hey guys, if you love storytelling like I love storytelling, then you're going to love this next app. It is an amazing new creative app that I've just discovered and been had the privilege to partner with, uh, Pocket FM. I tell you, I ever since I've had it, I've been listening to so many countless amazing original stories from creatives from around the world. Uh, Pocket FM is a online uh, you can put it in your ears when you're working out, listening to original stories and, you know, films. Um, you have dramas, you have action, you have thrillers, you have everything in between. Um, and I think there's something for everyone. So head over to Pocket FM, which is in the description box below, and follow and sign up today. You won't be disappointed. See you there. Tired. <laughs> Very tired. <laughs> Very tired. <laughs> exhausted emotionally yeah. exhausted physically exhausted <laughs> in a good yeah. way it's it's kind of like I, I say it's like going to the gym because you know when you're sort of there you kind of feel you know uh crap but then like an hour later after it's done you feel amazing if that makes any sense so it's that yeah. it's that sort of release um in my in my opinion because and Claudia you're gonna you're gonna gonna get ready for this one because like we're gonna be on stage <laughs> for the whole time oh, like, I, I, look. I saw it I saw uh -huh. it in, oh in... you saw the play that's right I forgot yes I, you know, saw no, it. No, no. I mean I saw it oh die, I guess oh okay My <laughs> I was reading it I was reading it I didn't see it I didn't see it um wh when you guys put it on mm. why didn't I see it well would you whatever we can talk about <laughs> some other time I was graduating, right? I think when you guys were. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. were. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I was doing my little my other show. Um, <laughs> when I was reading it, I was like, "Oh, this this gonna be a marathon." Yes, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be. But I was <laughs> like, "Oh, my roommates are really gonna have to be, you know, doing lines with me." <laughs> um, yeah, regularly. This, this play is like I think it's just a just come short of an hour long, and oh, I wow. think I have like one moment where i'm not on stage in the whole show just one moment you're going to be on stage the whole time <laughs> wow yeah, yeah. entertaining that's yeah, yeah. that's it. that was one of the, the one of the hardest things is is when i love i personally love two people plays i think it's it, it shows a real it's like one of the most challenging things to do because normally it's one set very minimal um set that is there um yeah. and you have two people to keep the same audience looking at the same picture almost mm -hmm. engaged for you know 60 minutes and um but it's really it's like tough. Happy. it's like it's yeah like it's tough mm -hmm. and it's and it's amazing and it's all 100 down to the writing which we have a fantastic script which really helps and the and the and the amazing, the British banter that is so quick <laughs> that is so apparent within this play really helps. Um, and but it's creating like interesting pictures with the same tables and chairs and the same two yeah. people was one of the most challenging things from my point of view last year. Um, How so? And then also working because you haven't got masses to work with. You don't have like elaborate, also because it's festival style. So I see. you often yeah. don't have the time, the space, the budget to kind of have these like elaborate sets because you've got people coming in and out quite you can't quickly. be folding clothes. Mm -hmm. in, nice. Yeah, you know, it's 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 like, a, and there's like, there's no costume changes and things like uh, that. So it's no. it's really focused on the acting, which I love. It's an, that it's an actor's play, which I, mm. I love. So it's, and you know, you know what else? Like, cause what you said about two person plays, like I personally, I have some beef with two person plays, especially in England. <laughs> Especially in England, just because, I mean, my favorite two person play is Lemons, 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 which, you know, is a great play. Yes. But that, but that, even that play, I have a little bit of beef with just because there's so many two person plays in England, especially where it's a man and a woman, they're in a relationship, that relationship goes wrong, they break up, they might get back together, they might not. And that's every <laughs> single two person play in England. And mm -hmm. so when I read this two-person two play, my first thought was 
please let this not be a man and a woman <laughs> who are together who break up and then get back together and thankfully it's not so I was like yes an original yeah. two-person play <laughs> mm. it was that. it's all it's all down it's all down to the script really that really aids us is we don't like the heavy lifting is is done by the words that are already mm -hmm. written and then it's 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 my job to then bring out the actors and our collaboration together to kind of create this beautiful story in a three-dimensional way. Um, and I think I was really excited for when we did it last year, because when we were auditioning, I kind of thought I had an idea of who I wanted to play the woman. Mm -hmm. And then people came in and that went out the window and I was like, oh <laughs> my God, my plan has gone. Yeah. But then that kind of made me realize it's kind of be prepared but don't plan, like don't, mm. don't prepare yourself for what you think is going to happen. Prepare yourself for anything. And I know that sounds like that. so much work, but it's not, it's, you have to rely on your instinct and trust your gut. And that's why I love when you said about uh, women coming and it's like, I do, I, I'm so biased, but like women's intuition, women's gut feelings. I mean, <laughs> it's like, it's so raw and like, you, Claudia, you'll know this, but like one of my things that I learned during when I first time I directed was that sometimes when I feel something I can't quite put it into words it's this it's this feeling and I just do this <laughs> she does and I was like Joe would literally do a scene oh, and Joe and I just be like yeah I don't know what to say but it's this. I don't know <laughs> yeah. it's not money it's like it's the money moment or it's, it's like the, it's the it's like, the, the je ne sais quoi yeah, 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 like, yeah. It's, the, it's the friction and I think this play has so much friction and and I think as well because it's so um ambiguous like you don't as an as the audience member what my my idea of what that I'd love the audience to take away from it is that it's not set in stone what how the story ends there mm -hmm. isn't really like a beginning mm -hmm. and an end it's okay. kind of left open mm -hmm. um and I want the audience to take away whatever they need to take away from the play and it's not what I, I want them to that. it's what they so it's, it's almost like it's, um... it's it's almost and this is the highest praise I can give you, Floyd, seriously. But it's almost <laughs> it's almost Shakespearean in a Ooh, sense. Oh, wow. It's wow. Like I, I felt this in the last round of auditions because last year we had uh, a really talented actress playing the woman who was just wonderful. She was an older actress and it was fantastic. But the great thing about the way Floyd has written it and Shakespeare did the same thing, which is why I, I say it's almost Shakespearean, is um, he didn't write it in a way that it has to be a certain way. He didn't write it in a way that this character has to be this age, this character has to be this gender, this character has to be anything. So th that's what's really great about it. And I'm excited. We're very excited to see how it's going to be different this time, especially with Claudia, who is, you know, we've I've seen the woman as an old elderly British woman. I've seen the woman as an elderly American woman. I've never seen the woman as uh, a, um, a Mexican lady. So that's going to be great. I'm excited. <laughs> that's going to be great. Yeah. Fun. Love that. Yeah. I love that. So I have a I have a I have a fun question and, and there's no there's no wrong answer, but the three levels of influence, money, power, and respect and if you could choose one of those things which would, which one would you choose and why good question yeah well, go not, for it it's not the money i can assure I you would, i would <clears throat> choose influence for sure for sure i would i would yeah it would do i tell you why sure <laughs> I feel like there's so many things and I'm not saying that I'm right about things, but I feel like there's so many things that are just so obviously terrible and people. And I feel like if I could just convince more people to like, <laughs> I have, I'm big on like, <laughs> even though some people say that recycling is a hoax. Um, I once saw like, I once I went, I was filming in Mexico and I had to go to a, it's called relleno sanitario where everybody puts the trash, you know? And it was it was the one of the most impactful things I saw in my whole mm -hmm. life. It was just horizons and horizons of garbage, wow. of and it was just so I was like, this is unsustainable for the planet. And wow. since then, and I feel like I talk to people about this sometimes, but I see people just I don't know, just thrown away. I don't know. I'm going on a tangent of environmental. <laughs> <laughs> it's just that kind of thing that I'm just like, if I could make you understand what I mm. saw. And what mm. I understand now, you would be completely different on 
your views on fast fashion or something like that. Yeah. No, that's awesome. That's great. That's yeah. great. Being kind to people, not being so mean. <laughs> I don't know. Definitely. Uh, 100%. I love that's that. That's what I choose. It's a great answer. I think I would probably choose, um, I'd probably choose respect. Okay. Um, I think because I don't know whether it's a British school thing, um, but it's kind of like respect is kind of like, you know, teachers, it's like, especially in the schooling system, it's like demanded and it, and it wasn't always given the other way. And I, I, I say, even though there isn't always, <laughs> isn't always there. No, I, was, I always had a big qualm and maybe that's why I got in trouble at school. Cause I, it was, it was, it was, <laughs> it was, I do think I'm a big believer in that respect, respect is, is earned, mm-hmm. um, is earned, but should also be freely given hmm. in terms of uh like not like withheld for certain people I think it should be freely given to everyone but um yeah it was definitely a it was definitely a one-sided street in in my uh not all my teachers I had some absolute you know um legends of teachers that uh <laughs> are big reasons of where I am today but it's definitely so I think if everyone if everyone I think had a little bit more respect for each other <laughs> we'd have a Mm-hmm. we'd have we'd have a bit of an easier time I think um but then it doesn't pay the bills so I don't really know. <laughs> yeah. you know living in New York City it's hard it's hard mm. and it's like yeah if you, had, if you had unlimited money right you could put on any place <laughs> right you could do there anything you go. especially in this industry right you could you could and you could you could change the world that way but it's um yeah I think I think I think respect I think the world will be an easier place I like a that. kind Great of place maybe. love mm. that um yeah I I think I'm leaning more towards respect as well um Mm. money is definitely something that is tempting because I'm I'm (laughs) I'm I'm currently raising money to produce something and it's it's causing me sleepless nights just looking at the budget the budget of what what I'm trying to do because Mm. unfortunately I'm 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 an ambitious person and when I this thing that I'm trying to produce I could go very simple but I could also do it my way but my way is expensive so (laughs) So money is something and I think influence is something worth, you know, it it's definitely has merit, but from my view to to paraphrase Spider-Man, with great influence comes great responsibility. Love that. And <laughs> that kind of terrifies me a little bit because uh I, you know, especially in, in the state of the world today, how we're so divided politically and everything and how Oh, everyone sort of has their own opinion. I'm sure if all of those people who hold all these different positions could have influence, they would. But is that a good thing? Yeah. And yeah. am I arrogant enough to assume that my influence that I would put out there is necessarily good? I'm not sure. I don't know. I know I think I think it's good and I like to believe it is, but everyone else does too. So, <laughs> you know, it's, it's tricky. Um, yeah. So, you know respect uh I'll, I'll i'll say something really personal so my father died when i was two mm, and sorry to hear that. Thank, thank you i i was brought up with the knowledge at least everyone told me that he was a very respected man and that he would walk into a room and he would have a presence about him and a lot of people respected him and i guess you know subconsciously that's something that maybe i've internalized a little bit as a goal to strive for um again it doesn't pay the bills but you know it, it it could maybe it could you never know i'm never sure know. some some people who make a lot of money are well, very well respected i don't know um this is very philosophical i i'm i go on tangents with this because i'm like there's no, no right it. answer there's that, no right answer exactly um, it's whatever yeah. you feel is is true for you i i think and Absolutely. i'm very curious of what floyd has to say yeah, um, me too. I, I went last because I'm I'm a coward. I wanted to think, <laughs> think it through. Um, it's certainly not money. <clears throat> I, I, I spent um, 20 years working as an advertising copywriter, and I, I do say to myself, quite a reasonably successful um, advertising copywriter. Loved it to start with, but towards the end of my career in advertising, I, I started to get a little bit tired of um, influencing markets mm. with things that I didn't actually have any belief or faith in 
Um, so when I stopped, I thought, of, and my wife is a star. You'd ha honestly, you'd have to trust me on this because I threw all that away and dived into just I'm going to write plays um, for nothing. You know, it's 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 hard work. Um, so my I would my answer would be influence because mm. I take Joe's point. You're quite right. Yeah, everyone you know everyone thinks they it should influence, and maybe that we we it's an arrogant thing to do. But I spend my working career influencing people to buy Coca Cola or bloody car. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I would like now to influence people, not in a, not in a brain mind control way, but to make people think or question or challenge or um, look beyond the the Overton window and just sort of look and say maybe everything that we see isn't perhaps as it is. Yeah. Uh, not to follow what I think, but to follow what people are able to work out for themselves. But I think we live in a world where we are told increasingly what to think. So I'd like to contribute to the wall that says, "Start thinking for yourself." He, he wants oh, us all to. He, he wants us all to be vegan. He wants everyone <laughs> to be vegan. <laughs> That's number one. That's number one. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, it was so great talking to you all. Okay, so for those listeners that you know, you want people to go to watch it. Okay, in one word, each individually, what? Why should we watch this? I know it's tough. I know it's tough. Um, I think for me is what I was trying to say early in a very dysfunctional sentence. Um, <laughs> it's uh, it's humanity. I would mm -hmm. I would hope that people might go there and come away with perhaps a little bit more humanity. That's mm, it. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Oh, I would probably say. Um... I would actually probably say I'm going to add some punctuation to mine to make it smell. Go for it. Um, yeah. But the word, the, the word and our understanding um, of reality, question mark. And like how and it can differ. Every single person's reality is so different. And again, to assume makes an ass out of you and me. Mm. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, and it's, it, I think that's something that we do a lot. See, so yeah, I feel like reality, question mark. It's a big one for me. Love that. I'm going to choose awareness um, mm. purely because, you know, this play is a, is about a man with disassociative identity disorder, um, which for a long time was thought to be uh, schizophrenia. It's not schizophrenia. Mm. It's something completely different. Um, and, you know, I think there's a bit, there's been a big stigma around um, DID um, from what I've seen. Um, through research and stuff in which people think that, you know, either it's not a real disease or it's, you know, or people are putting it on or, you know, or we should, I don't know, treat these people like they're dangerous when really what they need is compassion and they need love. And that's, you know, that's, and they deserve that too, you know. Um, so, you know, just, I think people should see this this play in order to just be aware that this is something that is very real and it's something that um, that deserves empathy. So, yeah. Love that. All of the things they said, I think, are completely true. <laughs> so, uh, apart from all that, I am going to say that you should come see it because it's going to be fun. It's going right. to be one hour of entertainment. And I've been mm. in theaters when I'm like, oh my God, just God make it. <laughs> Why did they make this three hours Same. long? You know? And it's like, I feel like this is going to be the opposite of that. They're going to be like, oh, 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 what? It's over now. <laughs> so much fun. Mm. I love it. Oh, I love it. Um, Where can people find you guys on social media? And I'll make sure to have the information in the description box so people can like go and get tickets and all that good stuff. So uh, where are you guys on social media so they can find you guys and follow everything you has you guys get? So if you want to follow the theatre festival we're doing at, it's the Rogue Theatre Festival, so at Rogue Theatre Festival. So you can find all the information about the show on their social media as well. My social media is at Staten the Facts because my last name is Staten, not Staten, and I was hoping that people would catch on to that, but they didn't. <laughs> um, so um i also have my own theater company at riff Raff nyc which i'd love to plug in there too so yes yeah. awesome anyone else well, <laughs> my instagram is claudia acb i thought we were going around saying our instagrams <laughs> yeah 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 okay yeah. well that's that's my instagram <laughs> um also I'm, I'm, 
<laughs> yeah. Um, and mine is, we'll be, they'll, we'll have um, all of the ticket info on all of our individual Instagrams anyway, but mine is um, at Chloe.Champkin. Love it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and for myself, it's um, uh, my theatre company, which is called Touted Folly. So it's at Touted Folly or www.toutedfolly.com. And one, one, one last thing I just want to throw in for my mission. In this entire conversation, apart from what Joe did very well there, it, it, he navigated it very well. We've not really described what the show is. And there's a reason for that. And that's because it, it, there are so many spoilers. If we were to start to discuss what the, the, the storyline is, it would um, it would betray the purpose of the story. So people just have to trust and trust. go in. <laughs> just go in. I love that. I love that. That's like, that that makes it more exciting, twist. I think. Yeah. There's Ooh. a big twist it's, it's, at the end. Like you, you've got a rock and you've thrown it on the edge of a cliff, and it, it'll just, it'll just pull you down. And you, yeah, you know. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. Well, and everyone is go- writing a new play too. He's writing a oh, new really? play, and I want to read it as soon as it's done. Yeah. Yeah. All right, congratulations. That's <laughs> awesome. That's yep. awesome. You and me, look out for it. <laughs> All right, and everyone who are listening, please go watch, go support, follow every each and everyone, and you know just uh support 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 thank you so much for coming on the show it's lovely you. talking thank to you thank you thank you thank you very much thank Definitely. you thank you and thank you all for listening and always remember to live love laugh we'll see you guys next time bye bye